What big keys am I speculating on today? Stay tuned and find out. Welcome back comic book fans. This is Rusty again with Collector Auctions and today I've got a brand new comic book haul for you. These are books that I've been picking up from Whatnot, eBay, and Heritage Auctions over the last several weeks. These are big books. Most of them are big books. There's some smaller books in there, but they're mostly big books. They're big keys, things that you would want to put in your own collection. I know I want to put them in mine and I don't mind selling some of them occasionally, but Definitely want to get them into my shop, do a little clean and press, get them in the CGC, and let's get some high grades on these things. But before we get into the books, what do I say every week? Hit that like button, slap the subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on content like this each and every week. I put out episodes on Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. I don't want you guys to miss a thing. And also, also, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I will be posting special offers on some of the books that I sell. I sell on eBay, but you can go to Facebook, you can go to Instagram, mostly Instagram, and you will find some of the books that you'll definitely get a better deal on there. So check it out when you get a chance. Like I said, Facebook and Instagram, Collector Auctions. All right, guys, let's get into the books. All right, so today's first book comes from eBay, and it falls in just like the last episode. What am I picking up off of eBay these days? I'm picking up some really cool, funny books, books that are usually older than me, but books from stories from my childhood. I saw the reprints. Some of these are the originals, but let me show you what I'm talking about. I picked up another copy of a different issue of Donald Duck from Dell Comics. Now this is issue number 56. This is from 1957 and I did a search just like the last episode. Those Donald Ducks that I picked up, I'm literally doing these searches for Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge, very fine, Dell, Gold Key, and I'm trying to find these 50s and 60s and even early 70s books that I think are in really good shape and Nobody's really out there looking for these like I am, I think. I, I'm just looking for these in high grade so that I can eventually get them cleaned and pressed. I think they'll be definitely worth something because, let me tell you this, a 9.6 right now is, you haven't had a sale of a 9.6 and something like this since 2010. There's only 12 of these on the census. And a value from 2010 for a 9.6 went for $287. I mean, we're talking 13 years later. I don't know if I can get this into a 9.6, but I'm hoping to get it into that lower 9s, definitely. Uh, a 9.4 is the most common grade on this book. So you can tell that even though there's only 12 on the census, the majority of them are ends up being 9.4s. My guess is any other ones that are out there are probably so low grade that you don't want to get them graded. But this is a really nice copy I found. I didn't pay for a lot for this on eBay. But a 9.4 went for this just a couple years ago, back in 2020, for $240. So I'm rolling the dice a little bit on this, hoping I can turn like a $30 purchase into a several hundred dollar value at some point, maybe even more at this point. If I do a really good job on this and the condition of this, once I get into it, is decent, maybe I can get a decent grade off of this. And but I'm not too worried about that one. this one for today, guys. This is definitely a PC book for the moment. And, but you can always get these things graded and hold on to them and definitely have some value later on. My daughter one day will have no trouble selling this once it's getting graded because I'm pretty sure the grade will be pretty good. But that's not bad. Donald Duck number, 50, number 56. All right, so the next few purchases that I ended up getting all came from Whatnot. And this one right here came from a new seller, or at least I thought it was a new seller. Once I got on there, I realized that it was from a previous seller from a different name. But I'll tell you this, the books were just as good. I ended up getting several books, but the only real one that had any significance, the other ones were just really dollar bin type books that I just added to the PC. Not really worth going over, but this one was definitely one, and it's dropped in value right now because there's not a lot of spec on it at the moment, but it's still a key comic. It's X-Men number four. This is from January of 1982, excuse me, 92. This is Jim Lee, John Byrne, and it is the first appearance of Omega Red, and this book was super hot a year ago. 
but it still maintains a lot of value at a 9.8. Now it's come down, it has come down. And I didn't spend a lot for this, but which is nice, but is in really great condition. I've got, I've had my 9.8s on this, I've had my 9.6s on this. You really wanna get 9.8s these days because the most recent sales kind of fluctuate in value a little bit. One went just a day or so ago for $101 but the same day also went for $150. So I guess it's just, you gotta be lucky. You gotta pick the right one, I suppose. I think one was an auction, one was a buy it now option. But this is still a good book to have and I still look at these whenever they pop up and they're really good shape and this one is in really good shape. So I went ahead and picked it up, but as I said, you need to get that 9.8 on this. Great book to have, first appearance of Omega Red. All right, so the next seller from Whatnot that I did was somebody that I've never bought from before. It was during one of those searches where I was looking at people and sellers who were selling Bronze Age books, and I stumbled on this show, and that's how I do a lot of these. I'll stumble into a show, and I'll watch for a while, and I'll see if the books look good and see how they describe them. And I ended up taking a chance on this one. I ended up buying some pretty nice books. The first one's not a big key. It is the second appearance, though, of Power Girl. And it is All-Star Comics. Like I said, it's not a real big key. But in high condition, it's actually pretty valuable. This is All-Star Comics from, this is number uh, 59. The second issue that Power Girl's in, of course, the first appearance was in 58. This is from... As I said, March. this is March 1976, I believe. I don't know if Roy Thomas, who was it? Jerry Conway was writing this, I believe. But this is a book that if you can still get some of these all-star comics, even if it's not issue number 58, which is the money book, they're still worth a little bit of money if you can get these in these high grades. Nine-eighths for this just recently sold here about, well, I shouldn't say recently, I guess about a year ago on eBay for $350 for a 9.8. The most common grade you're gonna find on this on the census is a 9.4. And again, the last sale of this went from last February for $104. So that's not bad for a 9.4 on something like this. This one will definitely not be a 9.8. There is a there is definitely this one tick over in this bluish area right here. But I thought this was a good book to pick up. It's and it's only, I only picked this book up because of the other book that I picked up. I don't like to buy on whatnot and just buy one book. Sometimes I like to get two or three books to kind of lower the shipping cost overall. And another, this book piqued my interest. So I went ahead and added it to this order. But the first book, the first book that I ended up getting was this one right here. And everybody knows what this is. This is Secret Wars number eight it is the origin of spider-man's costume part of that origin of where he got that costume and what it was and of course that leads to the origins part of the origin of venom and this is just wonderful mike zek artwork right here classic cover and i took a shot on this when i bought it and i think i'm going to come out pretty good on this this right here is a really excellent copy they took their time and they showed the spine really well on camera and I couldn't pick up any spine ticks and I'm telling you it doesn't have any spine ticks. What it does have is some creases down here in this corner right here but I'm telling you they're, they look like very good pressable defect candidates right here. I'm excited about getting this book in there. I own a 9.6 on this. I've never been able to get a 9.8 on this and I'm looking forward to trying. Hopefully this one will meet that. I'd love to get that 9.8. 9.8's the most and a Prices have come down, but a 9.8 most recently sold here at the end of January, just a few days ago, for $600 on Heritage Auctions. 9.6 is your most common grade you'll find on, a nine, on issue number 8 here, and it, it sold the same day. I think it was the same auction, and it literally sold for $336. And it's one of those reasons I'm holding on to my own personal 9.6. With this market down, I'm hoping that these books will rebound I, they'll go back up at least a little bit. They may not rock it up like they did a couple years ago, but I think these are good books to have in the PC just to hold on to, and they will only increase in value over time. And I'm looking forward to having this one in my PC and holding on to this one for sure. So good books, both of these. That All-Star Comics, I'll 
give it a clean and press and we'll make sure that it comes out pretty good. We'll see if I actually get it graded. If I feel like it's going to at least hit a 9.4, I may go ahead and send it in to get it graded. If not, I'm going to hold on to the PC for the time being. So the last WhatNot seller I bought from was also another brand new seller for me on WhatNot. It was a seller called Fulcrum Comics. I believe they're out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they do this directly from their store, which goes by another name, and I don't have that in front of me at the moment, so when I do the editing for the video, when you see guys see this, I'll put their name of their store up there, because I'll tell you, if I ever make a trip out there, I've got to hit their store because they are loaded. That store was absolutely brimming with great books all over the place and in really good conditions it looked like and I would definitely I'd almost take a trip out there for nothing else but this store but I will tell you something their prices were definitely a little bit on their high side and it was an unusual program on whatnot normally you will have a whatnot program and most sellers will literally have a book and they'll talk about it and they'll ramble a little bit and they'll do an auction or whatnot but they will keep the ball rolling they will keep the store keep the selling going and what i found on this one was really odd it was like they didn't actually have their books pulled out ready to go what they did was they took the camera the phone i guess and they went around the store and they they showed everything. Uh, they were going through counters and they were showed, showing displays and they were flipping through boxes. Hey guys, is there anything in here that looks good? You want me to run this? You want me to run that? And that's kind of what happened with this right here. Yes, there were a couple books that got me in there to begin with that caught my eye when I was doing a search for new sellers on, again, this was again another Bronze Age seller. And it was a little disconcerting because you kind of expect them to pull the book out or at least have the books ready to go but that's not the way this was and it took forever for them to run the next book because they would be taking requests and they would be going back and forth and i lord knows i went and asked them to go back several times on some books and that's how i ended up getting several of these in this order right here they'd be thumbing through and i'd ask them hey pull that such and such book out and let's look at it well let's look at the books that i ended up getting Overall, I'm pretty happy. There was one book that was definitely I should have pulled back on a little bit, but let's just get into the books and I'll show you what I got. First book right here is Spider-Man 249. This is a book I had in the PC and it's a book that I've never gotten graded before because all the copies that I have for my PC that I grew up with all have at least a few little spine ticks over here. And I haven't been able to find a decent price one of these in my searches over the last couple years that have been really good or the price has been reasonable and it's actually got some surprising value 9.6 is on this this is what if i'm sorry did i say the spider-man 149 it's an early hobgoblin appearance you've john romita artwork you've got uh, john byrne cover from February 1984, just to give you some stats and information. But a 9.6 is the most common grade you're going to find on this book. And it's it's a it's a potluck, just like one of those other books I was talking about. On this, basically, there's been two sales in the last month of 9.6s. One went for $180, the other one went for $46. And I'm sure one of those was probably an auction and one was a buy it now situation. But you can see that there's a big range in this kind of book there's probably not a lot of buyers out there there's probably not a huge market with this i've been finding that a lot of these spider-mans these are real popular with a small group of people but they don't have as wide a range of interest as i would like and what i need that's why i've got i'm sitting on several of these early hobgoblin issues that if they're 9.8s, they'll sell, but if they're 9.6s or 9.4s, they're just going to sit there a little bit unless you just practically give them away. 9.8 on this, and this is what I'm shooting for on this right here, just sold last week in January for $228, and that's right in that sweet spot where I'd like to see some of these books. Definitely, this is a book I bought to clean and press and, and hopefully resell for a decent amount. If I can get that 9.8, definitely. Next book up these are well i tell you I, i'm just going to show you i'll show you the first one it's a book you've seen me present many times on this channel it's an all-time favorite x-men 212 this is a really nice copy another chris claremont 
great issue. Wolverine cover by Barry Windsor Smith. You got Rick Leonardi on the inside. December 1986, it is features the Marauder storyline, the first battles between Sabretooth and Wolverine. Just wonderful, wonderful uh, storyline and art in these right here. All three of those Marauder's issues, I, or was it four? I always think of 2011, 12, and 13, but I guess technically 2010 actually is part of that storyline as well. But this issue right here and the one following is my two favorites. And this right here, I keep wanting to get this 9.8 in my collection. I am setting on 9.6s and 9.4s. I just a struggle, a struggle to get this, and that's why I keep picking this book up if I think it's got a shot. And this one looked really good, so I picked it up. 9.8s on this run for $403, and that just recently sold about two or three weeks ago here in January. 9.6s fall off the cliff. This is a big drop. It goes down to $68. One just sold on the 29th of January, and really, it's not even worth getting it at that point for 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 $68. I mean, that's crazy that it drops down that much and that's kind of why I'm sitting on a couple of 96s in the PC. And I can't do anything with it. So, I guess this is one that if I really feel like it's going to get that 9.8, I'm definitely going to just have to put it into that pre-screen because I don't want it falling down to a 96. Just it's just not going to be worth it. But when I pick this one up, I'm also looking for as I already mentioned 213. This one I just picked up as a 9.8 off Heritage because it was a reasonable price. Markets down. Nine point, this right here, 213, Claremont again, of course, but you've got Alan Davis doing the cover in the interiors. You've got Psylocke battling Sabretooth before Wolverine takes over. This one, of course, is January 1987. Most common on this one as well is a 9.6, and slightly better than the 212. It's at $79, sold in that same day as the as the 212, probably from the same buyer, I would imagine. I bet if I back went back and checked, I bet bet that's the way it would went down. 9.8s on this go for about $160. The last one sold on the 28th of 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 January. I didn't pay that for that. I paid a lot less. Again, the market is down, but these are super great books. These are good keys. They're not super big keys, but they are solid foundational type of books just to have in your PC and to hold on to for a while. Just great books. They're great display books. This is, of course, the first cover of Wolverine and Sabretooth together battling here. But I think these are both really good books and these, these are books that everybody should have in their PC. So the last three books actually are very interesting, and some of them have some really big potential for some high, high values. But one of them is definitely one of those for the PC. The other two I'm kind of speculating on more for fun than anything. And I kind of jumped on it when he when they were jumping through and thumbing through the boxes. I ended up ended up seeing some things and I was like, hey, pull that out. Let me take a look at that. And this is a book that I had considered buying back, I guess, in October at my LCS. And I had such a big purchase that day that I put it back and I kind of regretted it. And I've been looking to pick it up ever since. It's a book that I had on my PC as a kid. And I'm sure that book's not even worth getting graded. But I found a really good copy of this right here. It's from Charlton Comics. This is the six million dollar man first appearance in comics. I think he might have probably was in the magazine. They had a magazine as well. I don't know if that was Charlton, but in comics, I believe this is the first appearance. And this is from 1976. I grew up watching this TV show. I love Steve Austin. I love those shows. And I remember having this book as a kid. I didn't think much about it. Most of those Charlton books seemed like they were second rate to Marvel and DC and even the gold key books, to be honest with you, and Harvey even. But another book that I'm speculating on that's from my childhood and surprising value on this. Now, I knew there was some value to it. That's why I went ahead and picked it up from this, this particular whatnot show. 9.6 on this is a the most common grade you're going to find out there graded on this. And December last year, last sale went for $203. But if you can manage, if you can manage to get a 9.8 on this right here, last sale was last March, 
went for $860 off of eBay. So it's got some surprising value to it. It's, but again, you've got to get that good grade. I look forward to getting these into the shop and hopefully I can pull some, some rabbits out of my hat and get these things up up in grade. Uh, it's a little rougher on the side and around the spine than I thought, but I think with a little bit of work with the tack iron especially, I think that'll come out really good. Now, the next book was one that as they're flipping through, I immediately recognized the art and it didn't have the value after I, after I bought it that I thought it might and there's not a lot on the census, but maybe there should be. This is Jungle Comics number one. This is from Blackthorn Publishing. I'm not even sure of the year. I'm sure it's from the late 80s. And but this is a this is a Dave Stevens cover. It's just you recognize his heart art immediately. And I know there's premiums on on his art. I know a lot of people collect the covers just because of his good girl art. And when I said that there were I didn't find a lot of graded books on this. The last one I found, well, the last sale, the highest sale I saw on this was a 9.6 for only $110 from July of 19, or 2021. I was a little shocked on that. And it gives me a little hope, though, that if I could pull a 9.8 off in this, that there will be some desirability for a book like this. Like I said, there's a lot of people who love Dave Stevens. So I'm tired of taking a shot on goal on a book like this. But the last book that I picked up was the big book. And I've been looking for a really good raw copy on this, and I took a shot. I took a chance on this seller that their description of this was as good as it as they said, it's in that ballpark. I mean, they showed off some things, and it's got some defects on here, and it's definitely not going to be in that 9.8. I don't even know it's going to be 9.6, but I'm hoping it's going to be in that 9.4, maybe 9.2 range. But I finally picked up issue number 120 of X-Men. And this right here is the first appearance of Alpha Flight. And I, this is the last John Byrne, X-Men book that I needed to complete my run of at least having the books. Now, I'm still working on getting these all graded. Graded as a 9.6 or a 9.8. That's a project that will be continuing over time. But before I can get them all graded, I also have to get all the books. And this is, I realized that this was a mini goal that I set for myself this year. And once I went back and started checking, I realized this is the only book that I needed. I'd picked up everything else. So finally got this on my PC. I took a little bit of shot on this from this seller. I think I'm pretty happy with it. It's got a few more spine ticks than I would have liked based on the description, but you know, you, you take your chances. There's a phrase that kind of goes something like this, that what trouble I get into is usually my own fault. So I take responsibility for getting this book and paying what I paid for it. And I'm looking forward to getting this one into the press and getting it graded. I'm hoping to at least get this graded out to something that'll be val at least as valuable for what I paid for it. And then look to upgrade, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to upgrade this to get it to where I really want. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll move on from it. And we'll see what kind of grade we get once we get into the CGC. All right, so the last book in today's haul comes from Heritage Auctions. And it is a beauty. It is a gem. It is a huge key. It is a book that I've got in my PC several times. I've gotten it graded. And I got my personal copy from the early 80s graded. I, I, it wasn't a good grade, but I wanted it graded because I wanted that book in the PC. I bought a signed copy about sometime late last year and I'm looking forward to getting that into CBCS at some point because who signed it was George Perez and let me show you this beauty as I said I picked this up off of Heritage Auctions as a 9.6 this is New Teen Titans number two first appearance of Deathstroke the Terminator and of course you've got Marv Wolfman George Perez and this is a book that I thought I was this close to buying several times down in Charlotte at the at Heroes Con last year and each time I went back I, I hesitated I was looking for a better copy and I went back and I 
hesitated and I, when I came back every one of them were sold and I couldn't believe it so I'd been looking for a really good copy to get graded I found a signed copy last year from Canada that I ended up buying and as I said I'm gonna send that in the CBCS it's gonna be a pretty high grade but there are a few little defects but this popped up here a week or so ago off in Heritage Auctions as a 9.6 they actually had a 9.8 on there as well and it's funny for what it went for versus this I've probably been better off just buying the 9.8 the values on a lot of comics it's I'm a broken record everybody is at this point the market is down on a lot of books and I think you had a really good value whoever bought that 9.8 I ended up with a 9.6 because this is a sweet spot for me for these early 80s books like this I get a lot of I get my John Byrne X-Men from that same era graded and I'm very happy with the 9.6 and I'm telling you, I'm very happy with this as well 9.6 right here I'll give you a value not what I paid this is what just recently sold on eBay just a few weeks ago just a couple weeks ago on eBay went for four hundred and twenty dollars it was a best offer but if you look at some of the other sales at that time period they were going for 375 400 so it wasn't a huge probably best offer off of that 420 9.8s again that heritage auctions and I want to say I'm looking at the date I got notes right there that heritage auctions was around the 17th of January and it went for about six hundred dollars and like I said that right there was the what the price I probably should have just went and bought that one I bought this for half of that and again I was real happy with that price but that 9.8 I think somebody's got a really good bargain because over the last year, all through, thousand, through 2022, 9.8 of this book sold for around that $1,000 mark. A little bit more, a little bit less all year. And I think a $600 value at the beginning of 2023 was a, somebody got a bargain on that. So, But I was real happy with this 9.6. Taking a look at this, this is really sharp. I always take a look at books no matter what the grade is and see if there's any way to improve them and there's definitely a couple of spine creases over here especially in the green and the blue of Raven's cloak right here that look like with a little bit of tack iron they can be improved but there's also just a little bit of a corner I don't want to say a ding but there is a little softness right there on that corner down there so I don't think I could break this out and get it to a 9.8 it's definitely too big of a risk I'm real happy and I'm going to leave it in this 9.6 and just be happy with it at this stage and if I run across a brawl copy that is really good really good I will still pick that book up and we'll try to get it in we'll see if we can get that 9.8 someday but it won't be a super hot project for me right now getting this 9.6 is a pretty good plateau for me at this point so gotta say great book to end the show with i love this book do you guys have this book in your pc let me know leave me a comment in the comment section let me know if you have this book or any of the other books today these are great books that i've got i've got some big keys super secret wars number eight is a huge book this is a huge book some of the other books aren't quite that huge but they are minor keys in their own right so these are all good pc books but they're also good books to get graded and for resale if you want to do that sort of thing again i try to add value to my books by picking out good candidates that i can clean and press and send the cgc and get them graded it is a it's pretty much of a passion at this point to do this i don't have a lot of a lot of uh books in at cgc at this point i've got a silver age order that's getting ready to actually it's being graded right now so i should see that back within the next week or so but i don't have any other orders in right now but i've been cleaning and pressing like crazy on a lot of these books so we'll have to start getting a few more orders in and it'll be interesting to see if i can get good grades on all those rolls that i that you saw today anyway that's it that's it for today guys join me monday where i do another comic book shop tour i went down to virginia beach over the last weekend and i ended up visiting i believe i was up to four different comic book shops and i'll talk to you about my experience with them and i'll show you some of the bangers that i picked up from one shop in particular 
and I'll talk about the one shop that I didn't buy a single thing in. So stay tuned for Monday at 10 a.m. I hope you join me for that show, and I hope you enjoy today's show. And that's it, guys. I'm out of here. Just remember, every comic book has a story.